Hello and welcome to the Babbles Travelling Errands podcast. I'm Grace, your host, and I am an Irish girl living in Ireland. I live in Limerick with my lovely partner James, my tiny cat Beans, who's very loud and outside chasing things at the moment, but he's got a bell on. So if you hear a bell tingling, it's for the birds. So yeah, uh, mostly he hunts next door's leftover scrap food at the moment, but so welcome to my podcast it is the end of february it is like the 24th of february i think and i've not really put up a podcast in a while um i've been really busy and doing things and whatever you're not interested in that you're here for the making um i have been putting up um I've, I've got a few vlogs that I was putting up. Um, I put up a video about the Irish fibre crafters. Yesterday we had a lovely opening day for the first day that it's open. Um, if you're interested, I will link it down below and you can have a little look at it. It was really, really good. So many people showed up. It was so much fun. There were alpacas. Yay! Two black lady alpacas. They're a little bit skittish because I think it was their first time that they were out so like in the public so I'm not sure if they're being trained to kind of be more socialized or whatever but they were so cute either way so um I've got a lot to talk about because I haven't really done a podcast podcast in a while so yay first off I need to uh, put a winner of uh, the competition that I ran um, a couple of episodes ago and that was the podcast entitled um, working it out and I have pulled a win winner using YouTube comment picker <laughs> and the winner it was Marie Jo and she said she would love to spin yarn. Actually that is definitely one of the classes that is being offered in the Irish Fibre Crafters over on their website. There's a beginner spinning class and um, we're going to be working, we're going to be offering that class quite regularly I think so. That's so exciting. So what did you win Marie? Um, you won my hand spun you won a um a worsted weight three ply which would be incredible for socks actually um you might not get a whole uh two pairs out of this you might get like shorties um or slipper socks something like that but it is a sport weight kind of a fingering to sport weight so yay this was dyed by my friend ellie and ada uh, my friend who runs uh, ellie and ada she did a uh, club this is one of her club colorways it's a rustic yarn um and it, i think it was like a cheviot and um really hard wearing beautiful colors i think it was autumn berries i'll find the details and i'll pop them on the little label right now it just says grace because i was showing it in a in a demonstration um so you won that so marie jo you need to get in contact with me um via um uh, my Instagram, maybe a DM or Ravelry, a message on Ravelry. And um, you can also email me at grace at babblestravelingyarns.com as well to give me information about how to get this to you because it's so pretty. So thank you so much for all of those people who gave me so many wonderful ideas. So many people were telling me they want to learn brioche from me. I'm like, girls and boys and people who don't identify as either, I have half knit a brioche project. Calm down. I don't know everything. I mean, I probably could work it out eventually. And actually yesterday someone was really interested in learning brioche. So I was like, well, maybe in September I might be able to teach it because I need to finish the bloody project first. Oh, <sighs> but anyway, what can you do? Um, yeah, so that was really exciting. I've been meaning to do that for the last couple of weeks and I just didn't. So Thank you so much to everyone that entered. Thank you so much for literally, that was an amazing amount of crowdsourcing for information. That was invaluable for me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate every single one of you and your ideas. Excellent ideas in there. Um, there was one on um, kind of learning all the breeds of sheep of wool, like the properties and choosing the right wool for your project. And I was like, yes, I could talk about that for six hours straight. Mm. <laughs> so lots of really good ideas in there so thank you so much so you know sometimes you're so you know you can't see yourself from the outside so having some people say you know a lot about this and then me thinking oh yeah I'd never have thought about that myself but anyway thank you so um I um I have a number of things to talk about first 
Let me talk about the project that I finished for the cable cowl being hosted by Akira, the Knitting Annihilator, and also Marsha from the Very Little Podcast. So we are running this two month cowl. It started on the 1st of February and it is running until the end of March. Yes, the 31st of March. So anything with cables is um, is eligible. It can be a whip, it can be um, a hat. And there's, there's a ton of hats after going in and I'm after making a hat too. And P.S. I finally opened the threads. I think I said I was going to do it on the podcast that I spoke about it and then I didn't do it for like a week and a half. What's wrong with me? Someone had to message me and be like, are you going to do it? I was like, I'm so sorry. Oh my God. So the threads are open. There are some rules. You have to be following um, all three of us on Instagram, YouTube and on Ravelry. And um, yeah, you have three, eight, three chances, actually six chances if you want to um, enter into our chatter threads and finished object threads in all six, like, like all three of our groups. You have loads of chances and there will also be spot prizes for the Instagram hashtag uh, CableCal2019, CableMal2019. And it's basically anything with a cable. You can knit a cable, you can crochet a cable. So, um, for the cable cowl, cable cowl, cable mow, I have had someone get in contact with me and she, her package has arrived. So this is one of the prizes and it's amazing. It's from Debra Makes Crafts at Etsy.com. Um, so Debra, make, Debra Makes, I've been kind of, we've been kind of chatting online and um, I've been following her. She's been following me and all that for a couple of years. And, um, she, well, I, I think so anyway. Um, but she sent me some incredible package. She, she sent me this beautiful necklace. This is all, um, these are wooden beads that are hand dyed with black walnut, madder and turmeric. And the cord is this beautiful um, kind of hemp cording. So it's not leather. And um, it's, I, I don't like the idea of skin. I just don't like it. Um, I know that it is very environmentally friendly and it's very durable and waterproof and it's, you know, an alternative for plastic. But it's skin and I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. So um, I am absolutely loving this hemp cording. It's like it's done it like it's like a fishtail braid. So, um, yeah. Oh, this one actually. Oh, this one is actually just knotted uh, hemp, just like woven, like a band. Oh, it's so pretty. <gasps> lovely, 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 lovely. Really nice. So it just makes me so happy. Um, so she sent me this lovely package. I'll show you mine first and then I'll show you the prize because she sent me this absolutely amazing bag. <gasps> so good. <laughs> These are, this is naturally dyed. This is naturally dyed with elderblower, elderberries and flowers foraged at the lake. So the white one is the flowers foraged at the lake. So you can see the flowers kind of imprinted on there on linen. And then the elderberries is this stunning purple. Oh, look at that. So it's got this, it's got that hemp ropey business as a, um, as your, your pull. That's the first time I did that. I just got her beautiful hand stamped logo there. Deborah makes. <laughs> it's oh, and there's a pocket. Pockets. Oh, oh, and it comes with a lavender sachet. Also, this is the elderberry stuff. Oh, so pretty. It's a really light inside, and I love a light color bag on the inside because you can find everything. If it's really dark, you lose everything. I do anyway. So thank you so much. That is so wonderful. I'm kind of nervous that I'm going to lose those though. Hang on one second. I think I need to tie that in a knot. So pretty. Yes. I think I need to tie those off. I feel like I'll lose them. Anyway. Um, yes. So this is my beautiful bag. But you guys, if you are one of the winners for this bag, I'm going to have some emotions. <laughs> Sometimes... Sometimes people don't get in contact if they win something and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> this is one of those times. I don't want to give this away. It's so beautiful. Oh my God. This, this would be my handbag if I, although I love this bag as well. This is my handbag. I had, I washed it there 
a while ago just hand washed it and it's just been drying on the back of the door but this one this is my cottage number nine the lady that lives just down the road from me she's amazing but this one is a giant tote bag with pockets on the outside on both sides oh sorry let's calm down so there's like a beautiful pocket here and a beautiful pocket here so this fabric is the same fabric of the flowers um, forest at the lake and then this pink fabric is dyed with avocado skins and fla uh, yeah as uh, dyed with avocado skins I didn't think the avocado skins gave you a pink color that's amazing it's absolutely amazing and inside this one so you've got this lovely um, a woven band there cotton cotton probably it feels cotton and you've got two pockets on e one on either side on either side can you see that i'm not very i'm not very good at showing this so this is deborah makes and oh my giddy aunt and she, and they came packaged in this gorgeous dyed calico which i want to use for something else I want to use for sending off. She also has included beautiful lavender sachets, three lavender sachets naturally dyed with lavender and um, oh, neem leaves. I think neem leaves are inside it. Yes, I think so. So avocado skins probably is that pink because it's the same pink as, as this one. So I'm going to put it into the pocket on the inside to make sure that stays with that because that's part of the giveaway too. It's gorgeous. Look at this, look at this, look at this. I just want it. Oh my God, I think I'm gonna have to buy one. Oh well, no, I have my other one, it's so nice. I have my knitting bag and my beads. You know, I feel so natural, so natural right now. Oh. So let me give you the details for her. Oh. I'll wrap that up nicely again so that you can see it, but oh, it's so beautiful. That bottom part is like a, a hardy canvas, it's a twill canvas, it's lovely. So this is um, Deborah Makes Crafts at Etsy.com and uh, she says it's a giveaway prize and you can find her on Instagram as Deborah Makes and I hope you enjoy your bag. Whoever the winner is, you'll find out at the end of March. <laughs> so get your prizes in. Oh, sorry, get your finished objects in and your chat get chatting. I think this has to be go. That this has to go to the finished object thread, right? Has to. Oh, it's so pretty. My goodness gracious. So that was wonderful. 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 Um, and I chose to make the beautiful tied knots hat by um, Justina Lurkowska. So this is a really nice, really, really nice project. I knit it out of Walcott Yarns in um, their base, which I cannot remember the name of. Oh my God, oh my God. Opus, yes, Opus. Um, I can't remember the colorway either because I'm the worst, but it's stunning, isn't it? It's just this beautiful, it's the tealy green and it's, it's meant, it's designed for cables. It is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I love it. So, um, I can't remember which size I knit. I think I knit the biggest size. Tied knots. But yeah, I love the center. It kind of fades into this. Really nice. It kind of does the gnome thing, you know? Gnoming. So I'm thinking of putting a little something a little pom-pom just to pull it down maybe I don't know <sighs> I've discovered something I don't think I'm a hat person I've knit a ton of hats I don't think I'm a hat person so this might be going as a present to somebody we'll see I think I'll I think I'm going to start having a little present drawer and see how, how it goes but it's absolutely beautiful I wish I wore hats but I just don't I'm always worried that they're gonna fall off or I'm fiddling with it you know it's so pretty and my country's not really that cold you know I don't really need to hat all the time anyway it's absolutely beautiful I have a quite a lot of this yarn left actually I have about I think I probably used about 57 or 58 grams of a DK weight 
uh, or this is sport weight, sorry, sport weight. I knit this on sport weight and I knit it on a 3.75 millimeter needle. And it's beautiful. So, yay, that's my entry into the cable cal and I'm really excited that I finished it. I finished it when we were doing quite a lot of traveling with James's um, sister and partner and James's friends were over. So uh, we did a lot of kind of traveling around Ireland in the car. So this was the perfect project. Once I got past the first cable, I was able to look back at that cable and just follow it. I didn't need the chart. I think we did, I think I did one, uh, wait, one, two, three. I did three repeats of the pattern. And it's so pretty. It looks so fancy. It kind of looks a bit like owls or angry owl faces, do you think? Mm. Anyway, it's gorgeous. And the yarn is so soft. I want a garment in this. It's absolutely beautiful. You know, sometimes, you know, if... I bought this when I was in Bath just because I really liked the colour and I was like, okay, I'll just buy one. Um, and we have quite a lot of these one skeins in our in our stash. Or I do. I have quite a lot of one skein wonders in our stash in lots of different weights in DK worsted and um, so fingering weight, mainly because I just liked the colour. But what I kind of uh, have just occurred to me is, and a hat is a really nice project to test out the yarn to see if you want to get some more. So I really like this yarn. I would love to have a beautiful cable jumper in this yarn. But I didn't have to buy the whole load of it, you know what I mean? To be like, oh yeah, I'm definitely sure. So a hat's a nice little project and it's gift knit afterwards. So you can, it's a double use project. So that's nice, yay. So that is project number one. Now I have also been, I'll, we'll just do the knitting and then we'll go into the weaving and then the spinning. Let's spit it up like that. God, I do so much nonsense. So much nonsense. Um, I have been working on my partner's socks. These socks have been going on for about since May last year. I think they might be done by May this year. This is Gamer Crafting in the Darth Vader colorway. Darth Vader. Darth Vader's lightsaber. And I'm knitting from the inside and the outside of the bowl. I'm using Haya Haya 2.5s. And I think this is a 72 stitch sock. And I'm knitting two together. And I've turned the heels on both of them. I was stuck for a while now on the heels. So I did a, um, a partridge heel. I don't know why I did that because it really doesn't show up on the variegated yarn, but it's nice. And I feel like it's more sturdy. Probably not. But um, anyway, so these are the socks for James. And I'm now on the gusset and the gusset is taking my lifetime to finish. <laughs> but I really want to get these done because I want to use them as a sample for my class that I'm going to be teaching. I'm going to be teaching a class on, it's a comprehensive class on knitting socks. And it is basically a comprehensive class on knitting. I'm going to be speaking all about wool and the properties and the best, the best wool to buy for your bird, for your project, to use for your project. Um, starting off casting in the round, I'm going to have things started to knit in the round on on magic loop on needles I'm gonna have DPN so you can try that or I might try uh, I might have the small little needles as well the little nine inch circulars um, uh, we're going to be using DK weight wool and we're going to be like learning all the techniques of knitting in the round and different socks and different sizes and um, and then the, that's the first class that's the first day the second day is um, about a month later uh, to give you a chance to to I'm going to give you the pattern anyway so you can go away and knit the sock and come back to me with any problems so, but the second second day is going to be all about heels all the different heels you could possibly ever want to do <laughs> and that I know of so you've got the heel flap and gusset the short row heel the uh, fish lips kiss heel there's uh, and there's a couple of different heels with gussets and things like that how to adjust and then the afterthought heel um, so a number of different um, things that uh, you'll be learning about on that class and then um, 
the last class will be knitting down to the toe, your decreases, all the different types of toes, whirlwind toes, wedge toes, um, rounded toes, how to get like toes that shape your feet. Um, and also then we can, then we're going to flip the thing. Uh, we're going to flip the way we knit socks and start with the toe up. So you'll learn all the different, the Turkish cast-ons or Judy's magic, magic cast-on and um, learn how to so start socks that way. So really by the end, you'll know everything that I know everything <laughs> so it's kind of a comprehensive class because once you know how to knit a sock I really think you can knit anything you know you're, you're learning short rows you're learning increases decreases you're learning um you know ribbing you can put in a pattern you know you're learning how to knit in the round you're learning how to shape your garment to your foot to your body you know nothing's really scary after you know how to knit a sock I think but, uh, and, and now I'm going to sit here and knit and, oh God. But I'm almost at the stage where I can bring this back to the cinema because these are my cinema knitting socks. So they weren't really cinema knitting socks at all because they had the heel. I had to put in the heel eventually. So we can go to the cinema again, finally. James would be like, I cannot believe we're not going to the cinema just because you don't have a project. That's not what's happening. What's happening is we're just not going to the cinema because we're trying to save money. <laughs> So that is, that's actually t talking about the class I am going to teach. Uh, the first one, oh, I hope people come. Anyway, it doesn't matter, whatever. So these are some of those and I want to have a couple of, um, a couple of different socks to show ones that are clean and have not been worn already. Uh -uh. So they're the two knitting projects that I've been working on. What I have been working on mostly um, has been spinning and weaving. And I finished a weaving project. Uh, well, I finished the weaving fabric. And this was a piece that I had put on my loom um, with the intentions of making a skirt. So this is, this is the piece. This is a, uh, a tartan something or other. It's a tartan weave. So I was basically looking at the, um, I was looking at the warp threads. So the threads that go up and down this way are the threads that you put on first. And then I was, I was looking at these, the way they were changing, these ones, vertical ones. And then I was changing my colors accordingly. So sometimes I made a mistake like here, but whatever, it's woven. So it should be all the same. Now, if you look really close, I took it off the loom and I was really happy with it. It looked super silky and lovely. This is made with um, naturally dyed yarns by Margarita down in Cork. They're made with, um, from Your Wool is her company, Your Wool. And there is Wensleydale, uh, mostly Wensleydale. Three of them are Wensleydale. And I think this green one is a Cardale, uh, Cardale and Mohair blend 50 50 so but it's only a little a little bit so it's got a lovely little halo a little fuzz there um so i took it off the loom it was beautiful looking lovely and silky beautiful beautiful and then i needed to finish it now to finish your woven project you need to stop it moving around you need to almost felt it a little bit so i put it in the wash <laughs> scared the sh scared myself to death and um, it came out and it came out incredibly wrinkly so I I ironed it with a steam iron and a towel over it so I was I wasn't actually putting the iron on it and um, so it looks like I'm actually the the warp threads have moved a little bit and it's forming this kind of little let's see if you can see it when the light comes through it this little ridge that almost looks like a twill, an unintentional twill. You see this? It kind of looks like sh I'm happy with it. I'm grand with that. You know, you can see this. I don't know what happened there. I have no idea. These long kind of slanty lines through it. You can see it really well when the, when the light comes through it. I don't know, it's really weird, huh? Anyway, I got over myself and I stopped freaking out. Um, so I've got about, I've got about, 
about a six foot, six foot of this, and that's it doubled, right? So my plan is, so if I fold it in half, ish, then I'll have one for the front, one for the back, one for the side, sorry, one for the back. And then I'll have plenty. I'll actually have plenty. I'll probably do pleats. Um, yeah, I was going to put a different fabric in between, like if there was a gap to make it kind of flare out a bit. But actually, it looks like I'm going to have enough fabric to do what I want to do. I don't know how I'm going to do what I want to do, but sure, fake it. Be grand. <laughs> what I also did, because I wanted to, um, I didn't want to, oh, oh yeah, I got this beautiful um, little tiny. Where is it now? There it is. So I was talking to a weaver, a fellow weaver called Powered by Flapjack on Instagram, and he had made these tiny little shuttles. Now these are great for band weaving. Um, so on the rigid heddle loom, you can't use the heddle to push down if you're doing a really fine band. You put your yarn, uh, you put your fibre across, and then you use the shuttle to push it down. I'll put a picture just here so you can see what it, what what it comes up to. So I put a, uh, I put this on the loom and I made a little waistband and it's very wobbly there now. I wasn't very good at my spacing. It's gonna be fine. Um, yeah, but unfortunately I had a lot longer than this, but unfortunately one of the warps broke. So I kind of had to just go ahead and, uh, and stop. Um, Cause it was quite a lot of pressure, but I'm hoping hoping it's enough for a waistband yeah if I come up high enough I've got an overlap of about this much so if I fold it back on itself and put like a button and a buttonhole there it should be okay I've uh, again I have no idea what I'm talking about so I had um, a load of the warp left because of that broken thread so I just made this and I don't know what I'm going to use it for but it's so cute right could be a little necklace oh yeah could be a little necklace how sweet oh yeah so anyway so that's what I've been weaving a little bit of disappointment but you know you make what you make you do the best with what you have and uh, sometimes things aren't things don't turn out the way that you you want them to or you sh you think they should and you and you, you just kind of have to get on with it because that's life. <laughs> so I can still, it's not perfect, but I'm not in it for perfect. I'm in it for the process. And I loved making this little band. That was really, really fun um, and satisfying really quick as well because I didn't have to finish it. <laughs> Mr. Beans, is that Mr. Beans? He's a fool. I have captured him. Hey, Mr. Beans. He's got a wet tummy. He's been out in the wet. What have you been doing? Have you been trying to catch the cows? Have you? Mm, look at those great eyes. <gasps> He's like, no, I throw myself. <gasps> it's like a toddler. You know, the arms and the legs. <laughs> so what I have been working on mostly uh, in the last couple of weeks is actually my spinning and I picked up approximately 600 grams of fibre from John Arbin when I was over there over Christmas. I picked up um, uh, two different colourways. One was this colour which I cannot remember. One was pomegranate I think the other color that I that is on my wheel at the moment. I was trying to ply it up so fast today, but it was just not going anywhere. The, the, each one of these is 300 grams. It's a chunk. This is my face. There is so much in this. So I haven't washed this yet. I'll wash them both together. Um, and the other one is like a brighter red. This is the Merino. It's part of a Viola range. Hmm. Is it gonna come back to me? Viola, like a black currant maybe? 
Is that one of her colorways? Anyway, it's a John Arben Viola base, which is 100% uh, Merino, I believe. And it's been with me um, sh with alpacas, so I'm finding lots of hay everywhere. <laughs> So this is going to be a um, the warp on my next weaving project, which is going to be a huge sheet of dark and red kind of maroony grey, maroony ready colours. And um, yeah, my plan is to try and make another outfit, another jacket or a skirt maybe um, like my coat again which was basically four strips of woven fabric stitched up the back, stitched up the sides and it was open in the front. This one, I think I've got more fibre, I've got more yarn. So I'm thinking of hoping, hopefully getting some sleeves on it um, and maybe having an extra part in the front to make a dress with maybe pockets. I'm not sure if that's possible, but sure I'll give it a go, huh? but yeah we'll see I'm gonna try and get as much onto the onto the loom as possible I think I'm stretching my poor little loom my poor little baby loom but you know what you gotta make use for what you have and I don't have much space for anything else so it's gonna do the job yeah. so this is my next weaving project which is some John Arben fiber. The other John Arben fiber that I have I think is actually called pomegranate and it is in the Harvest Hughes colorway um, which has a Zwartblis in it which is a dark black sheep mixed in with a bright bright red so it gives a huge beautiful depth to it and that was the colorway that I spun. Is this one actually? This is the little bit that's left from my project um, from my coat again. So my coat again was this colour, was the weft, and then I had a lovely gradient um, on the warp, which I really want to do again. I want to dye up a gradient. Hmm. I'll get there. So, um, yeah, so that is my spinning. I also need to finish off this last piece. This is my shift cowl kit. Uh, which I had made up for me by Pretty Funky Fibres and um, I've one last bat to do and I've been holding off because I wanted to do like a demonstration on how to use a bat for spinning and I've just never got around to it so I might do that this evening and see what I can do with that um, yeah I am loving the way Mina Philip is doing her spinning vlogs she's concentrating on one spinning project at a time I really really like it really like it it's really entertaining to see the whole thing from start to finish so um yeah but I don't know if I have the <laughs> I don't know if I have the stamina to do it because I mostly spin at night and we're watching tv and stuff and I don't really want to film sometimes when I'm spinning you know anyway even though you'd find that surprising because I absolutely am obsessed with um going on live Instagram and talking about spinning and plying and all the different things. And there's so many people that have been kind of inspired by when I do do that. Like, I feel like I reach a lot of people by yeah, by doing that. So that's really fun. I love that. Um, right, so <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit about a beautiful skein of yarn that I totally broke my spending ban on. I've been saving money for to go to Edinburgh Yarn Festival and I've not been buying any yarn um, since January to try and stop my silliness. Um, but oh, I have so many more incredible makers in my feed now from the discussions on YouTube and uh, on Instagram uh, over the last couple of months. And I could not resist Ocean by the Sea. She had this incredible naturally dyed yarn. This one is a Aran weight, 81 yards, 166 meters per 100 grams. And it's called, it's called Mint Sam Chip BFL Nep. I love it. It's beautiful. I want to make a cowl, a lovely cable cowl with it. Mm. Yes, so I kind of broke my ban, but I wasn't, you know, how could you not? It's so pretty. Like, I love watching Ocean on her, um, 
on her Instagram, she does loads of these beautiful stories where she's just slowly dying and I'm like, <gasps> not dying yarn, not dying real life. Please don't die. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> it's so soft. So I'm casting that on a sap. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about solidarity swap. Now, I, the thought had crossed my mind, maybe I could send this away into, into the offlands for the solidarity swap. And then I was like, you crazy, no. <laughs> this is a day with me forever. <laughs> I, had, I, had, I gave myself a panic attack thinking about giving it away because her yarn is really difficult to get right now. And I hope it stays really difficult to get because it's a fantastic compliment to get as a dyer. I'm really happy for her success. Um, so the Solidarity Swap is a project on Ravelry um, set up by, as far as I know, there there's another, there's a couple of people doing it, but it was made, it was brought to my attention by Time Swedish, who I thought was Swedish originally, but I think she's from the States. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, Swedish person of color. Oh. No, she's from the States. <laughs> anyway um but she's lovely she, i love watching her feed as well she has her, her stories are like illuminating yeah anyway so um she uh basically so the signups are the 28th of february and the idea is that you swap yarn with a person who is from a different background from you and you get chatting and you learn more about them and uh, it's just kind of um kind of getting to know the community, speaking out, let, letting them have, the, letting them say their, their piece or, um, yeah. So I am will I signed up for the yarn. Um, there were other people who weren't able to do shipping or, you know, the, the price limit is $30 American dollars. Um, and, but there wasn't also an option to sign up for a pattern swap, which is up to the value of $10. So, um, that gives, you know, people of different income streams, uh, ability to do it. So I have a lot of yarn. <laughs> so I signed up for the yarn package and I said that I would ship anywhere because postage in Ireland is pretty decent that way. So if you're interested in popping over, pop over to the Solidarity Swap. I'll pop the link down below in the box of information um i really committed to that jingle uh, a bit too much i don't know uh <laughs> yeah so uh, all of the packages and parcels and uh patterns have to be sent out by the 30th of april yes 30th of april i took notes because all the rest of my notes are on my phone they're in you Oh. Um, yeah, I think it's a brilliant idea. I think it's lovely. And uh, shirt is the very little, I, it's the very least I could do. The very least. Right. I've been having some, some tricky conversations with people and it's mainly like people would contact me and then I would feel like I'm not the authority to speak about it. So... I have had some conversations where I've sidestepped and then the thought of how I've sidestepped the conversation and gone back to knitting has haunted me. And then I've actually gone back and said, listen, actually what you've said is challenging for these reasons. Have you thought about this, this and this? And it's actually been an incredibly productive way <laughs> to have a conversation. <laughs> so uh, yeah, they are the conversations that I'm having with people privately in my messages, in my inbox, with people around me, inside in work, I had to call someone up. You know, and this is how we make change. We make change by standing up and saying, do you know what? That funny, that joke, it's not funny. Why did you say that? That's incredibly racist. You could not say that again, please. You know, so anyway, oh yes. Oh, I meant to talk about that with the weaving. Oh, why am I all over the place today? It's because my soup is over there. I made soup and it looks very strange because it's got red cabbage in and it's very tasty, but it looks really weird. Do you want to see? I don't know why I made soup and then um, put it down. And I was like, I'm going to podcast now, but look, it's actually delicious. <laughs> like really delicious. <laughs> but the red cabbage has just turned into kind of purple grey gloop. This is the colour that no dyer ever wants because it, <sighs> when all the colours mix up together, that's the colour you get. And it's kind of like a mix between baby sick and poop. Oh well. <laughs> 
what was I going to talk about? Oh yeah. I, um, I've subscribed to this audio podcast called Weave and because I didn't really see any podcasts around that were just dealing with weaving and I feel like I need to know more and how do I learn about how, how do I learn about crafty things I watch podcasts is my preferred method because you learn such a wide range from so many different people you know if you're not if you want to learn generally more about something not like a specific thing where you can just like how do I do a Turkish cast on or something like that but if you want to kind of get a general idea about more about things like that podcasts are the way to go for me with weave uh, there's a lot of kind of I find that weaving is a funny uh craft because it's seen almost more like an art I've got this long-term relationship issue between the art world and the craft world because I I did go to art college and craft was looked down upon significantly and if it didn't have the idea or I don't know for me it seemed like if art had no use other than being observed then it was wonderful and artistic and innovative and creative if it had a use in the real world people were going to touch it and interact with it in a useful way then it was craft and its worth was less because the public could use it oh with their dirty fingers um i know that's not like um someone was saying to me that uh, oh they found art as having the thought having an idea behind it and craft had no idea behind it and i'm like no no <laughs> craft all of every single piece that i make has an idea and a thought behind it you know like that for me that's not my definition of art versus craft my experiences in the art world have been don't touch it look at it craft touch play enjoy feel worth you know and I think what I really love when I go into an art gallery or when I go into a a space where you're appreciating art I'll hate about 90% of the things um, but if there's something there that has taken a long time and a lot of skill and you know skill built up over years I obsess over that one thing you know like fine line drawings or fine paperwork or fine sculptures that are made of all these different things you know like really intensive meditative repetitive motion that's the art I absolutely love like fine painting detail painting gorgeous um you know it doesn't have like the content of it doesn't have to be beautiful or pretty or anything it's the actual method it's the process uh that I love and maybe that's the craft per crafts person in me but um with weaving there seems to be this kind of s crossover between thought and repetitive and, and and motion and process and the final piece which may not be a piece of clothing um it's more like tapestry weaving or macrame or or kind of wall weaving things um so but at the same time weaving can also be uh like table covers runners um placemats uh clothing window curtains <laughs> like window coverings <laughs> curtains grace they're called curtains you know <laughs> and I think what I really enjoy is that mix of possibility and this weekend I passed I um found this really amazing woman she her name is Megan and she's part of the Irish Fibre Crafters and she had done a textile degree in the States and she just moved over to Ireland and she was a artist in residence in the Byrne School of Art and um, seeing her work and seeing her process she showed me her her sketchbook and the sketchbook brought me right back I was like oh no here we go but it was like she has a process between from photos to constructing beautiful watercolors and then she weaves the 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 images that she has kind of processed through that process yes and um, we're sticking with it but you know the idea of <clears throat> so she works with tapestry which is mainly imagery um 
imagery on using thread and um, that idea that you are creating an image from thread to be looked at, to be observed. For some reason that feels better <laughs> as art to me. <laughs> Uh, these are all, of course, incredibly personal ideas and it's not necessarily true for everybody or everything or anybody else at all. But um, all that to say, I have actually bought a tapestry loom. <laughs> I didn't know what I was buying. Someone was selling it in the backyard and they put it onto, um, they put it onto um, <clears throat> the WhatsApp group that we have. It's like a spinning, small little spinning circle group. And they were selling it for like 100 euro or something, 150 euro. And I, I was basically like, yep, I'll just, I'll just take that. I don't know what I, what I was doing. I don't know. Anyway, so, um, yeah. And I, it's funny, I bought that tapestry loom before I met um, Megan. So it's like destiny, you know? Maybe not. But... It's given me a couple of ideas because I was thinking, oh, I'll make rugs on it, you know, I'll make um, rugs was the only thing I could think of. But it might be a way for me to bring back in my visual drawing kind of pictorial art. Maybe? Maybe? I don't know. I had... A kind of complete reversal like away from art um, after the recession I all the funding dried up and none of my friends like maybe one of my friends made it as an artist and I just really didn't like the um, the atmosphere and the com competition and uh, just not into it at all so um, yeah maybe this might be because I, I still find that I, I even though I'm surrounded by colour and creation, I wouldn't consider myself, I always kind of sarcastically call myself an artist because I have the degree, <laughs> but it wasn't something that I would consider that I am. Um, but this might be a way for me to reconcile the two in my head. So that's an idea. That's an idea. Oh. Oh, where was I talking? I was talking about, I was actually talking about a specific episode uh, with Weave, uh, the podcast. So, oh yeah, where, what? That was a tangent. Now, <laughs> um, so with Weave, she, and she interviews quite a lot of artists. This is what I'm saying. Like artists are, they would cons be considered weaving artists. So they make pieces, they make tapestries, they make things to hang ga in galleries and be bought by, um, you know, hotels and private collectors and things like that um and there's some incredible uh, pieces uh, incredible interviews on on her podcast about rigid heddle loom and the college of weaving and loads of different things there's, there's like 48 episodes uh oh actually i think this one was 51 uh that just came out i think there's another one out now it's 52 but the one i was going to talk to you about was one called oh my gosh can i pronounce that Oh, Shaniqua. There we go. Sorry. Looked like Shauna Green. I have the worst writing in the world. Shaniqua is the artist. She's a weaving artist based in the States, based over in the US of A. And um, it is podcast episode 51. And her weaving, her story, her... Let, let me tell you the title of the podcast. And I think it might be useful at this time during our discussions on um, race and inequality in the knitting community. her The podcast is called Learn to Rest, Not to Quit. So when things are getting overwhelming, when things are getting absolute, don't just give up. You can rest. And then you're ready to go again. So I really, really, really recommend watching that or listening to that podcast and looking up Shaniqua. She is incredible she weaves with hair pieces and her project for her masters was working with the idea that her sister and her the time they would spend together when they would um, braid each other's hair when she would when the older sister would braid Shaniqua's hair and how then Shaniqua used the met used the hair 
as a raw material in her weaving and she does these incredible like beautiful plaits and I um I ever since I started weaving and doing like hashtag weave I've been getting incredible amounts of like recommendations on my feed under weave because I followed the hashtag weave and weave obviously make means wig uh, as well as weaving you know so I'd be watching these videos they'd come up on my recommended feed and they're just mesmerizing seeing like cornrows being put in seeing little braids seeing all the different designs and oh my god it, it takes hours I was reading I read that book by um, I think it's called Americana and she was talking about um, you know how long it takes to braid the hair like I had my hair done a few days ago right and it took me I think the longest bit was the shampoo the cut was 10 seconds and the blowout was maybe 10 minutes like but to get a style put into hair uh, of black people it takes so much time and so much skill and it's abs I cannot stop watching them. <laughs> they are absolutely stunning. And then to come across this amazing artist, Shaniqua, like, it's really bringing it home. It's They're beautiful. I love her pieces. They're absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to her Facebook, or to her uh, website, and to the Just Yarn episode just down below. Um, and I really recommend you have a look, um, especially if you are interested in just things that are going on in different black artists especially for black history month so yeah i think there's going to be a lot of editing in this bad boy <sighs> why did i leave it to halfway through the day i should have done it this morning here we are here we are listen thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this week's podcast and i hopefully will see you next week on the flip side.